Hello, hello, hello. We're doing a series of videos on the Red Chili Peppers albums because there's a new Red Chili Peppers album out, out, so I thought I'd do all the albums leading up to the new album. When we're starting at the beginning, which is Red Hot Chili Peppers album number one, called the Red Hot Chili Peppers album, which is the first album, August the 10th, 1984. Problematic album. How so? Because um, the founder members, uh, Hillel Slovak and Jack Irons, Hillel Slovak is the guitarist, Jack Irons is the drummer, uh, are replaced by Jack Sherman on guitar and Cliff Martin is on drums. Kiedis on vocals, obviously, and Fleet on bass. They are, they are, the um, the DNA running through the band, aren't they? So yeah, this is the debut, and it was produced by Andy Gill uh, of the Gang of Four. He's a, he's a British musician, funny enough. Uh, died in 2020, first of February. Possibly one of the first victims of COVID. He died of he died of pneumonia. Um, and they reckon he may have been one of the first COVID victims because he'd been on the tour to China. Funny enough. Well, it weren't funny for him, but you know, you know what I mean. But yeah, he produced the album and he is responsible. <laughs> he is responsible for this mess. <laughs> for, I mean, the album itself is only 31 minutes, 54 seconds long. It's one of those, it's again, you can hear, you can hear that it's the Red Hot Chili Peppers. But there's not a lot to love on this record. And it's not necessarily that the, the, the songs, well, the songs aren't brilliant, but they're not helped by the piss poor production. Uh, the, the likes of which I've never, never witnessed. It is, it is really bad. And some of, I don't know, some of the decisions made by Andy Gill, and again, I feel bad saying this because he's a dead man. Um, you just you just go why why would you do this why would you do this um, funny enough probably the strongest track on it is why don't you love me which is a cover of a Hank Williams song <laughs> um, and I think that's down to it shows you the I don't know the naivety of um, the, the Chili Peppers songwriting s skills at that point you know it's all energy it's all yee, you know and you can hear where they're going. I mean, there's not a lot here. I mean, for me, there's not a lot here for, to love. Um, and again, it, it, I think the production really, really does get in the way. It's Again, it's an album over the years I've tried to appreciate. And I just go, yeah. <laughs> no, because the band are a band of, 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 of many fragmented versions. That's the interesting thing about the Chili Peppers is every every so often there's a, a personnel change and it kind of changes the, the chemistry and the dynamic. And at this stage, again, because you don't necessarily have um, like the founder members, the original members playing it, and you've got two um, you know, fresh boys in, you wonder if that has had an effect on, you know, on the performances. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, again, it's a, it breezes by. There's eleven tracks. It's just over half an hour long. There's a there's a four minute instrumental at the end of it, which is the I think it's the, yeah it's the longest track on the album, which is kind of interesting. Uh, which is weird. I mean, again, you know, this is that this is tell where I'm coming from it. You know, I find the 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 instrumental at the end probably the most interesting thing about it because it shows you that they're you know as a band that they're trying musically to you know develop you know to grow but yeah there's um there's not it's not a lot there's not a lot here to, to 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 grab hold of however where it gets interested in is the they in 2003 they reissued this the album on cd and they added a number of bonus tracks because um Kiedis was very upset with the way the album turned out and again pointed the finger at andy gill you know, it's his fault um, and the band felt that the the album itself didn't really match the demo versions, the demo tracks, the demo tape that they they recorded um, beforehand. And on this um, uh, expanded edition from two thousand and three, you get um, five demos. And if you they're available on on streaming and whatnot, it's kind of they've expanded the album. They're kind of part of the album there. And it's very rare that I'd say go and listen to the demos 
because you know demos are usually a bit unless it's I don't know Pete Townsend or Roger Waters whose demos are really tight and sound well almost like studio uh, recordings I'd very often say uh, you know, demos are just really for the hardcore fan but in this yeah Kedis has a point because the demos sound you know much more like a band playing you know <laughs> whereas again go and listen to the production on this it's it's really quite shocking you know, it's really quite shocking, especially if you, I don't know, you have any awareness or knowledge of the Chili Peppers. You go, how did they get from this? You you wonder how they just didn't get kicked off the label after this record because it is that bad, you know, that, that bad. But yeah, go and check it out and go and check out the demo tracks. And then you can see um, the problem, the problem there is with this um, with this album. But yeah, a fascinating, if wholly flawed introduction to the band that, again, has become one of the biggest bands in the world. From this tiny seed, which is probably one of the worst debuts any band has ever ever produced. Really, it's, it is really bad. Yeah, not only, again, I don't, again, I, I mean, the song's bad. They're not particularly sticky. They're not particularly memorable. They don't have any of the uh, the hooks, the hookiness of you know they're out there later material obviously because they do develop but you don't I, I can't see I cannot see how this band became the band it is you know I cannot see that from this usually when you hear a band's early material you can you can see you, there's like a little a road map you can see oh I can understand how they became you know big but this, in parts, it just sounds like a noise, you know. And again, Andy Gill's um, responsible for that. <laughs> again, because he's dead, it doesn't make it any easier to say. Um, so, yeah, give it a listen if you're interested. Um, and I think, again, because it's only 31 minutes, you're not going to, you're not going to, you know, waste too much of your time. Uh, 46 minutes with the demo tracks, so <laughs> you've got a choice. Or you could just skip to the demo tracks and um, and save yourself 30 minutes because, um, again, you can see you can see how rough and ready they are. Yeah, you know, there's an energy there, and they are fusing, you know, funk and kind of rap. But, again, it also sounds very so very dated now. It hasn't, it hasn't aged very well. Um, so, yeah. Our first thought we're in step on the journey through the catalogue of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And it hasn't been a good one. For a first thought we're in step, I've stood barefoot on some Lego and gone, oh, with my feet? You want me to review Red Hot Chili Peppers with my feet? Might as well have done. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I doubt any of you would have enjoyed this video. <laughs> but I've done it. And I'm doing it. Because that's what we do. Um, so yeah, I've been talking about Red Hot Chili Peppers again. The album sleeve. Come on, all the way back in 1984, August 10th, 1984, their debut. It's a stinker. <laughs> but I, I'd like to imagine with a better producer. They could have produced, you know, these songs may have even flourished you know, in the right direction. It's, you know, it's not a good start. And it's really surprising how they got from this to, you know, even uh, under the bridge and, and stuff like that. In how, long, how many years was that? Uh, seven years. So, uh, yeah, give it a listen if you've not checked it out, because it is a bit of a, you know, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs> My name's been Darren Locke. I've been doing the very first Red Hot Chili Peppers album on this little retrospective discography exploration video series type thing. Uh, if you don't like it, uh, thumbs it down. What's it, what's it matter? <laughs> Stay tuned for the next one. Ta-da!